this weather never end. First came tornadoes and thunderstorms with huge amounts of rain. And now the worst flooding in decades has swamped part of the Gulf Coast in Florida and Alabama, and even as far away as Maryland. So far, the violent storm system has killed at least 37 people in eight states. Caitlin Burke has the story. Flood warnings remain in effect all along the East Coast Thursday. Days of relentless rain too much for creeks and streams to handle. The flood water has engulfed cars, homes, and in Baltimore, it even caused this road to collapse, sending cars tumbling over the edge. The sidewalk's gone, the cars are gone, and everything just fell. It was like somebody came by and just ripped off the side of the road. Pensacola, Florida, saw nearly two feet of rain in only 24 hours. That equals about 9 billion gallons of water, the most the Florida Panhandle has seen in a generation. Hundreds of residents were forced to leave their homes, canoeing to reach higher ground. Other motorists were trapped in their cars for hours waiting for help to arrive. Operation Blessing arrived in Pensacola late last night. Today, teams going out into the community to offer aid to flood victims. This is that same massive storm system that unleashed at least 65 tornadoes across much of the South. Operation Blessing is also in Tupelo, Mississippi, where many of the residents lost everything. Basically, uh, everything looks kind of like, a, I would imagine, a war zone would look. Operation Blessing has been a true blessing. It's living up to its name. Parts of Florida, Alabama, and North Carolina are still at risk for tornadoes. But meteorologists say that by tonight, that massive storm system will head out to sea. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. It's horrible what's happening. It's just unbelievable how much rain has fallen down the Gulf Coast. Operation Blessing, by the way, has dispatched three major tractor trailer loads of food with thousands of pounds of food and supplies and water and other things that those people will need. But uh, all of us need to get together to help people in these uh, disasters. I ask our producers, well, what is causing this? Well, it's a, you know, it's a front with a bunch of rain. Well, I understand there were about twice as much rain that fell like in one day in the Gulf as fe fell in California in yeah. the, whole, the whole season. Unbelievable. It's un it yeah. really is. <clears throat> but uh, they sure don't have a problem with drought. I mean, it's feast or famine. That's right, but people can participate in what Operation yes. Blessing is doing by giving and helping us be there and Well, we, we'll be on the scene needed. wherever possible. That's what we're there for. Well, in other news, uh, what really happened in Benghazi? Did the White House try to cover up the truth? Republicans think they have evidence to prove that was the case. John Jessup has that story from Washington. Here's John. That's right, Pat. Republicans say they found the smoking gun that proves the Obama administration tried to hide the truth about that terrorist attack in Benghazi. Three days after it happened, White House aide Ben Rhodes sent an email saying the top goal should be to, quote, underscore these protests are rooted in an Internet video and not a broader failure of policy. Former U.N. Ambassador Susan Rice then repeated that talking point on several talk shows, saying the attack was the result of a protest that got out of control and not a planned assault. Security officials have testified the administration missed or ignored warning signals of the attack. Republicans say the White House was trying to protect the president from any political damage during his reelection campaign. Pat, you gotta expect that there's gonna be more hearings on Capitol Hill. Well, you get sick of hearing about it, and you know, Hillary Clinton says, well, so what? Well, people were killed, but the big thing is we've got a president. We, we were horrified about Nixon and the White House and the burglars and the break-in and all that stuff that went on uh, during the scandals of the Nixon administration. But we've got a president that's every bit as bad. As a matter of fact, worse, it looks like. I mean, this is a deliberate attempt. And to take the, the uh, UN ambassador and stick her out on public television to repeat over and over again the party line, which was based on a series of falsehoods. That is appalling. John. Pat, scores of girls and young women kidnapped by an Islamic terrorist group in Nigeria are being forced to marry the men who took them. Their parents say the girls are being sold by members of the Boko Haram terrorist network for as little as $12. And as you can imagine, outrage is growing over the Nigerian government's failure to rescue the more than 200 girls kidnapped two weeks ago. 
Hundreds of people braved heavy rain as they marched to the National Assembly to demand the government do more to find and bring the girls to freedom. One community leader says Boko Haram is demanding a ransom for their release. Deadly superbugs that are stronger than the most powerful drugs are spreading around the globe. And the World Health Organization warns the problem's only going to get worse. The bugs have developed from bacteria which built up resistance to antibiotics, making drugs virtually ineffective. And that means in the future, even more common, uh, even common infections or minor injuries could lead to death. Pat, this is a serious problem that's not getting enough well, attention. Uh, it's, a, it's a major story today, and I think people need to recognize this. See, if a little kid is riding his bicycle and he scuffs his knee, he falls off the bike, he can die. That's what they're talking about. They can, I mean, it's that serious. Just a slight little infection now because you know, these superbugs have morphed uh, against the existing antibiotics. But what they're saying is that the drug companies over the last uh, 30, 40 years haven't really come up with any new uh, substitutes to penicillin and the other drugs that have worked so effectively. But they have been overprescribed. That's been the problem. They have been overprescribed. And as that happens, the, the bugs inside of a person <clears throat> build up immunity, and then they begin to transform themselves into superbugs. And they say it's much more serious than AIDS. John. Pat, a philanthropist named Joan Crock dreamed that one day people, both rich and poor, would come together to enjoy the finer things in life. She partnered with the Salvation Army to make that dream a reality, and as Charlene Aaron reports, Communities across America are now reaping the benefits. This is the latest example of Joan Crock's vision for bringing people and communities together. A 92,000 square foot community center located in one of the poorest neighborhoods of Norfolk, Virginia. In 1998, Mrs. Crock, widow of McDonald's founder Ray Crock, donated $90 million to the Salvation Army to build a community center in San Diego, California. She wanted to create a place where children and families from different backgrounds could enjoy experiences that otherwise they might not be able to afford. Three years later, she died leaving more than one and a half billion dollars to the Salvation Army to continue that work for 28 additional centers across the country. This year, the Hampton Roads Salvation Army Ray and Joan Crock Core Community Center becomes one of the final three centers completing the historic effort. Local support for the project has been overwhelming. So many businesses and individuals have come together um, to contribute and to give their support to the center, and it's just been really wonderful to see. The new Croc Center is designed to be the heartbeat of the community, complete with an indoor water park and a state-of-the-art performing arts center. CBN News got a first-hand look at the center, which boasts the largest fitness floor in Hampton Roads and the indoor-themed pool area includes a two-story, 150-foot water slide, lap lanes, and a lazy river. Salvation Army Captain Brett Meredith is thrilled to have the Croc Center in his city. For Norfolk to receive this is a very exciting, very exciting thing and a very exciting time for the Salvation Army, but also for the community because of the transformational nature of these centers. It's estimated the center will also bring up to 200 jobs to the area, I'm really excited about what it's doing for the community. You know, I live right down the street. Norfolk's really stepping their game up. And it makes me proud to be a you know, citizen of Norfolk. It was close to where I live at. And also, it had everything that I wanted to do. Go in the pool, got exercise classes, all the exercise machines. Scholarships are also available for people who can't afford the center's membership fees. Joan Crock's vision for these centers what they, was that it would serve all socioeconomic backgrounds so that when you walked in, you walked in on level ground and that when folks were served, it would, it would be side by side and that, you know, whether, whether you have a million dollars in the bank or, or a hundred dollars in the bank, you, you receive uh, the help and assistance that you need. Meanwhile, Captain Meredith says this will enable the Salvation Army to make an even greater impact on those it serves while maintaining its spiritual emphasis. I think that uh, there are great needs in terms of uh, education um, and, and cultural experiences. Um, and we're going to work at providing those on an, you know, every day. Many of the families will probably have never been able to walk into a facility this nice 
and enjoy the amenities and, and enjoy the educational programs and things that we're going to offer. And, you know, it, the, the powerful thing is that it all happens in Jesus' name. And that's what's important. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Pat, what an amazing gift. Oh, it really was. I mean, it was a billion and a half dollars, and I mean, it's built on hamburgers, let's face it. I mean, that was the McDonald's hamburger, you know, billions and billions and billions of hamburgers. Yeah. So that's where Ray Kroc got his money, and uh, he left it to his wife. His wife, in turn, left a good portion of it to the Salvation Doing Army. Doing something good with it. That's and, uh, wonderful, it's, it's a beautiful it? center. Mm -hmm. I, I, we have a gentleman here who's just passed on. His name is Josh Darden, uh, who was the... Uh, uh, spark plug and spearhead of the local initiative because Joan Cronk said you've got to have some matching money. So I think they, they raised something close to $30 million. Wow. And he also wanted not only to have the local participation in building the center, but they wanted a certain amount for endowment. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very carefully thought out. and. Uh, uh, we commend the, the Army. The Salvation Army is a great organization. They are an amazing great organization. organization. Great history. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. The developer who once proposed a mosque and Muslim community center near 9-11's Ground Zero now plans to build a museum devoted to Islam at the same site. The New York Times reports Sharif El Gamal wants to build a museum dedicated to exploring the faith of Islam and its arts and culture. The building would include a sanctuary for prayer services and community programs no word yet on how the project would be funded. Well, today is the annual National Day of Prayer, and people are taking part in an estimated 40,000 events around the country, many at both local and national government buildings, including Capitol Hill right here in Washington, D.C. You can find out more about the National Day of Prayer and get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com.